This is the Polar Pacer. I wonder who they're trying to compete against with a name like that. Hmm. Well, hey there, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chase the Summit, and today we're gonna to be taking a close look at the brand new Polar Pacer and Pacer Pro. The Pacer and Pacer Pro are purpose-built to be streamlined and simplified without too many frills or fluff on top, and these two devices come in at two different price points with two different feature sets, starting at $199 for the Polar Pacer and $299 for the Pacer Pro that I have here. And of course, that's in US dollars, that might vary where you are. I've been testing out this Pacer Pro for a couple of weeks, taking it on my everyday runs, on trail runs, road runs, some hiking, and just around the house with general wellness data. And in this video, I want to share my thoughts with my initial thoughts with you on what I think about it so far and how it stacks up to the competition. Before we dive in though, if you find this video helpful or educational or just entertaining, consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel down below because that really helps me out. And also, if you're interested in picking up a Pacer or Pacer Pro, I'll have links down there that you can click on for the best pricing available. They do help support my channel, but they cost nothing extra to you. At first glance, the Pacer and Pacer Pro are nearly identical. Polar sent me the Pacer Pro, however, which is the more expensive version, so that's what I'll be showing off in this video, but because the Pacer and Pacer Pro are so similar, I'll be talking about both and going through the specs of both as we go through this video, and then sharing near the end what's actually different between the two. Okay, so the lower priced Pacer will come in at four different colors. You got a purple, teal, white, and black version, and the Pacer Pro comes in five colors where you've got gray, blue, maroon, green, and white. And of course, all those colors have fancy names like Mystic Maroon. I'm just calling them what they are. Both new devices are exactly the same size, coming in at 45 millimeters in diameter and about 11 and a half millimeters thick and weighing only 40 grams. But there is one asterisk there. The Pacer Pro I have here is actually one gram heavier than the baseline Pacer, and that's because it actually has a metal bezel where the Pacer, the standard one, is made completely out of plastic. These dimensions put these watches at a pretty good sweet spot in terms of size for most people's wrists, but at a super light weight at just 40 grams, you're gonna barely notice that on your wrist. That is a very lightweight watch. And if you're curious, this is what the Pacer Pro looks like on my 165 millimeter circumference wrist. In terms of build quality, of course, the Pacer and Pacer Pro come in with a waterproof rating up to 50 meters, so that's fine for uh, pool swimming, open water swimming, anything like that, just no deep water diving. Both the Pacer and Pacer Pro come with a variety of built-in sensors. You've got GPS plus GLONASS, Galileo, QZSS for positioning during your activities, and this is actually an updated antenna design for the Pacer and Pacer Pro. We'll talk about accuracy of this a little later on this video. They also have a built-in compass. Flipping the watch over, you can see Polar's updated Precision Prime heart rate sensor featuring red, orange, and green LEDs. This heart rate sensor is a bit different than previous models like on the Polar Vantage V2 and the Polar Grid X Pro, where on the Polar Vantage V2 that I have here, you can see that the heart rate sensor kind of sticks off the back of the watch a little bit. But if we look at the Polar Pacer Pro, it's actually flush with the plastic on the back of the watch, which does make it a little bit more comfortable on your wrist. One thing to note about the Polar Pacer Pro and Pacer is that there is no built-in SpO2 or blood oxygen saturation sensor. And this has kind of become industry standard at this point, at this price point. Next to that new heart rate sensor, you will find little metal contacts for charging. You've got two big magnets in there and then four little contacts for data and power. And there is an entirely new USB charging cable that clips onto here with magnets. It's very secure and you can dangle the watch from it without an issue. Now, unfortunately, because this is an entirely new charging cable, it's different than the older charging cable I have here, which is more of like a dish shape. And this was for the Polar Grid X and the Polar Vantage V2 and the Polar Vantage M2. Basically, all of the Polar watches use this older round charger. But because they changed the design now, if you're an existing Polar user and you've got a bunch of charging cables laying around, you can't use those with the Polar Pacer or Pacer Pro because it's an entirely new charging design. Both the Pacer and Pacer Pro come with a five button layout for controls and the buttons themselves have a really nice knurled texture to them that's a really it's it's easy to feel when you're not looking at the watch and they do have a really confident inspiring click to them when you click down on them I do like these buttons overall they're nice and wide so you can feel them when you're not looking at the watch like when you're clicking off laps or trying to start or stop an activity and overall I do like the button placement and layout design uh, on both watches as well moving on to the included bands on the Pacer and Pacer Pro the included bands come in two different 
different lengths in the box for big and small wrists, which is a nice touch. So you don't have an, a bunch of extra material flapping around when you're wearing the watch if you have a smaller wrist. The silicone is quite comfortable and stretchy, and along the length of it, there's little holes perforated through it to, for breathability to let that sweat out when you're out doing your activities, which I really like. The band attachment on the Pacer Pro is very similar. I think it might even be the same band as we saw on the Polar Vantage V2 I have here, being the gray color at the bottom here. You can see that they both have these little metal pins right on the connection point where the band connects to the watch. And you can actually put your fingernail in there and pull that pin out in order to replace the band with a different color, different material, whatever you wanna do there. The benefit of this design is that there's less material in here and there's no hinge or anything. So the band can actually pre-contour around your wrist. However, if you don't love the pre-contour design on the Polar Pacer Pro and how the band attaches, you can actually use this little piece of plastic that's included in the box. This little thing is called the shift adapter and it comes with all Pacer Pros. After you attach the shift adapter to the Polar Pacer Pro, you can now use any industry standard watch band that's 20 millimeters wide and quick release off of Amazon or from your favorite watch band manufacturer. They can all attach to this with no issues. Now this is only required on the Pacer Pro if you go for the cheaper $199 version of the Pacer, uh, that only uses 20 millimeter quick release band, so the shift adapter is not necessary. Moving on to the display on the Pacer and Pacer Pro, both of these new devices use the same 1.2 inch memory in pixel display, which is the same size, resolution, and technology as all of the older Polar watches. This is not a super bright or vibrant display. It's not like an Apple watch or anything like that, but it is very functional and easy to read in direct sunlight. Now, even though they're using the same display technology and display type in the Pacer and Pacer Pro, they did make some welcome improvements with this display. First, the Gorilla Glass lens on the front of the display has been thinned out to 1.1 millimeters from the older three millimeters thick. And this thinner glass actually brings the LCD display closer to the surface of the glass, which makes it much easier to read in any lighting conditions. I found this change to be pretty noticeable, especially when compared to something like the Polar Vantage M2 that I have on the right side of the screen. If I move these around in the lighting here, you can see that the Polar Pacer Pro is just easier to look at and read at a glance. Another huge improvement on these new devices is that they've actually increased the brightness of the backlight on the display on the Pacer and Pacer Pro, while also adding some adjustability in the settings for backlight brightness to dial it in even further. And I gotta be honest, in the past, like on the Polar Vantage M2, for instance, I wasn't in love with the display. I always found it a little hard to read. The Polar Pacer Pro has been much better in that department. Unfortunately, because the display is still 1.2 inches and the case size is 45 millimeters in diameter, if you do the math, we're still left with a pretty chunky bezel on the Pacer and Pacer Pro. It's hard to notice when you've got a black display like this, but if you switch the background to a white, you'll see a nice big black bezel around the perimeter of the watch, which isn't great. Another big change on the Pacer and Pacer Pro is that these devices are no longer touchscreen, whereas most of Polar's other watches like the Grid X Pro, the Grid X, and the Vantage V2 are all touch enabled. That's not necessarily a bad thing in my opinion. I never really use the touchscreen on my Polar Vantage V2, for instance, because I always found it to be kind of laggy and not very responsive. When it comes to battery life on the Polar Pacer Pro and Pacer, they're exactly the same. They both feature a 273 milliamp hour battery that'll provide up to seven days of standby or smartwatch mode, just kind of going around your everyday life. And that's with the optical heart rate sensor turned on 24 hours a day. When it comes to GPS mode, when you're out on a run or a ride, you can get up to 35 hours out of the Pacer and Pacer Pro, or up to 100 hours if you opt to use the power saver settings that'll reduce the accuracy of your GPS track a little bit. These battery life specs are almost exactly the same as the Polar Vantage V2, the Grid X, Pro, the Grid X, and all of Polar's other watches, so there's not a big departure here. That 35 hours in GPS mode is actually pretty solid and competes against the competition pretty favorably there. It's actually above average, but that seven days in smartwatch mode isn't very good because if you look at brands like Koros, they've got $200 watches that can last up to 20 days on a single charge. And I'm not really sure what contributes to that on the Polar Pacer and Pacer Pro. When it comes to the user interface on the Pacer and Pacer Pro, it's nearly identical to the other Polar watches like the Grid X, the Grid X Pro, and the Vantage series watches where you've got these watch faces that you can scroll through that have varying information on them. You've got information like your activity level, your heart rate metrics, the last activity you did, weekly statistics, 
and more. Pushing the bottom left button drops you into the system menu where you can start and stop a new activity, check your phone notifications, start a breathing exercise. The user interface on the Pacer and Pacer Pro is somewhat customizable, but not by a lot. You can basically choose what views you want to see, like what of those widgets you want to cycle through by enabling or disabling them in this menu by unchecking the checkbox. And if you go back here, you can also customize the watch face to some extent to be analog or digital. And you can also choose to choose an accent color for the watch face as well. One general observation I've had about the Pacer Pro I've been using for the past couple of weeks is that it's extremely quick and responsive to button presses. Whereas I've had some pullers in the past that feel a little bit laggy or sluggish or anything like that. And Puller is claiming that they've got an improved CPU in here that's like two times more powerful with more RAM and stuff. So that's probably what's happening and what I'm feeling. It just feels more modern, responsive, and I do like that overall. When it comes to smartwatch features on the Pacer and Pacer Pro, it's not overly complex, but that's by design to keep the experience simple and to the point of your activities. You can access your phone's notifications along with music controls to pause, skip tracks, and change the volume on your phone from your watch without getting your phone out of your pocket. There's also a really handy weather widget that you can dive into from the watch face that has a full extended forecast with graphics and tons of information, and I really like the weather widget on these Polar watches. There is one huge update to the Polar Pacer and Pacer Pro when it comes to smartwatch features, and it's down to the notifications from your phone. Previously on the Polar Grid X and all the previous models from Polar, when you're in an activity like a run or a ride, it would disable your phone's notifications on your watch, which was super frustrating to me. For whatever reason, Polar decided that they didn't want you to get phone notifications when you're out on an activity. Now, speaking as a guy with four young kids in a house and a family and a wife and a dog, I need to be in contact whenever I can. So being able to re receive phone calls and notifications on my watch is crucial. And it's something that has always driven me nuts with Polar devices in the past. I am happy to report that they've changed this on the Pacer and Pacer Pro. And now in the settings, there is a setting to turn on notifications to be always on, including in your activities. And this is amazing. Now let's talk about the wellness tracking capabilities on the Pacer and Pacer Pro. Both of these watches will track your basic wellness, like your daily step count, your calories burned, your activity levels, but they'll also track your advanced sleep metrics using Polar's excellent Sleep Stages Plus and Nightly Recharge features. Now, Nightly Recharge tries to give you an idea of what kind of value you got from your previous night of sleep when it comes to recovery. When it comes to accuracy of the sleep metrics from the Polar Pacer Pro, I don't really have a scientific way of measuring it. However, I can say that it's actually lined up pretty favorably with my Aura Ring, where on most nights, we'll see the same duration of sleep, and the sleep zones kind of fall roughly in line with the Aura Ring as well, which is pretty good. Both the Polar Pacer and Pacer Pro come with the same great library of activity profiles as most other Polar wearables. There's something like 140 different activity profiles to choose from. You've got the basics like running, cycling, and then there's more niche activities like Taekwondo and ballet and wheelchair racing. There's really something for everybody here, including multi-sport or triathlon mode. So you can do like a swim, bike, run in a single activity without having to break that up into separate activities. And of course, all these activity profiles have a full set of customizable data pages that you can scroll through and customize during your activity while using the Polar Flow app on your phone to customize all that data. The Polar Pacer and Pacer Pro are also compatible with external Bluetooth sensors like heart rate monitors, power sensors, cycling sensors for cadence and speed. However, there is no support for Ant Plus with these devices, so keep that in mind if you've got a bunch of sensors kicking around at home. When it comes to training tools, on the Pacer and Pacer Pro, they come with a full suite. First, you've got a series of fitness tests that you can perform on the fly. There's a running test that will guide you to do a running workout, and then at the end, it will provide a VO2 max estimation. There's a similar test for walking and cycling as well. In terms of accuracy of these, it's been a hit or miss for me. On some occasions when I do the running test, I'll get a VO2 max of like 65, which I certainly don't have. And then in other situations where I tried the walking test, it was much lower. So it's a little bit all over the place. The Polar Pacer and Pacer Pro also come equipped with Polar's Training Load Pro. Training Load Pro will spell out in basic terms if your fitness is improving or it's kind of going downhill. You can see here on my Polar Pacer Pro that I don't have enough data collected for this to be working yet because I've only had the watch for a couple of weeks. 
But if it was, it would put me in a zone between detraining, maintaining, productive training, and overachieving. Generally speaking though, my experience with Training Load Pro on previous models like the Grid X Pro and the Vantage V2 has been pretty positive and I like the data and the feedback it gives me. The Polar Pacer and Pacer Pro are also compatible with Polar's FitSpark, which is an intelligent workout suggestion widget that will suggest workouts based on your current fitness level, recovery, and to complement your recent activity. So you can see here, this is the FitSpark widget. In the corner here, it says supportive workouts is suggested. And if I dive into this, it says to do a 25 minute core workout. And if I scroll down, I can get the details about that workout and some other workouts that suggesting as well. Another feature available on both the base model Pacer and the Pacer Pro I have here is FuelWise. And FuelWise is a smart carb and drink reminder when you're out on a long activity. This will actually break down if you're using carbs or uh, proteins or whatever, and then it will suggest when you should eat along your activity to try to remind you to keep bringing in more resources. And the final thing the Polar Pacer and Pacer Pro have in common is that both are compatible with Polar's running program, where you can set a goal from 5K to marathon, and then the Polar Flow platform actually generates a training plan based on your current fitness level. Okay, we've gotten this far into this video and you're probably still wondering, what are the main differences between the Pacer and the Pacer Pro? Because they're $100 apart and so far they basically seem identical, except for a slightly different build quality, the price and the watch band connection. The Pacer and Pacer Pro get everything I just talked about in this video. However, the Pacer Pro does stand out with a few exclusive features. First off, we've got navigation on the Pacer Pro that's not available on the baseline Pacer. And this can be used with Komoot navigation where you can make routes using the Komoot app or on their website and then import that into the Polar Flow platform to follow it on the watch itself. However, you can also just import GPX routes that you downloaded from Strava or whatever, and that can also work on the Polar Pacer Pro. Keep in mind, this is only a breadcrumb navigation. This isn't a full base map where you're gonna see de details of road names and trail names and contour lines and things like that. It's basically just a blank screen with a squiggly line that represents where you want to be, and then an arrow that represents where you actually are. If you go off that line, it'll alert you to let you know that you've deviated your course. This navigation is pretty basic, but it'll save your butt in a pinch, and if you're like me and take the wrong turn, it's pretty nice to have. Another feature exclusive to the Pacer Pro is that it has a built-in barometric altimeter, which can detect elevation change over time. And that means that the Pacer Pro also has a feature called Hill Splitter. Hill Splitter basically breaks up all of your climbs and descents during your hiking activity or trail running activity to let you know how many ups and downs you've done along the route. It's actually a pretty cool feature. And then again, this is only available on the Pacer Pro. Another great exclusive feature to the Pacer Pro is that it can actually collect running power data from the wrist with no additional sensors required. This data is a great way of gauging your effort level in, on a given run and can be used in conjunction with heart rate data to get a well-rounded idea of your current performance level. And the final exclusive feature found on the Pacer Pro and not on the base model is that it has Strava Live segments. This is a special data page within your activities that will display your current position and ranking when you're out on a run and on an active Strava segment. This can be a lot of fun, especially if you're trying to get the CR on your local trail, you can glance down and see where you stand on that segment. And it's a pretty cool feature to have as well. And that's really all that's different between these two devices. The Pacer Pro gets the higher end build quality with a metal bezel. The unique band with the included shift adapter, the navigation features, hill splitter, the barometric altimeter, the running power from the wrist, and the live segments from Strava. All that stuff is on the Pacer Pro for that extra $100 more and not available on the baseline Pacer. And finally, let's talk about what might be the most important aspect of any GPS watch, and that's gonna be accuracy. First up, let's talk GPS accuracy. Polar claimed that they actually updated the antenna design on the Polar Pacer Pro to get a quicker fix and more accurate GPS performance. In my testing, the fix, that initial fix when I get went out for a run and hit start, was actually pretty quick on the Pacer Pro. And when it came to overall accuracy, I thought it was pretty good. So for testing, I put the Pacer Pro up against the Garmin Tactics 7, which I have here, which has multiband GPS turned on. And if you don't know, multiband GPS means that it actually can use 
multiple bands in order to get a more accurate fix when it comes to GPS accuracy. And in my testing, this is one of the more accurate GPS devices I've ever tested on this channel. So it's a good baseline for comparison. And just for kicks, I also recorded the same GPS track with my iPhone 13 Pro, just for an opposing baseline of comparison as well. All in all, I'll say that the GPS accuracy coming out of the Polar Pacer Pro is good. It's definitely adequate and good enough by today's standards. It's certainly not perfect in a lot of out and back activities activities where I ran a straight line out, turned around and came back just to see the performance there. The lines weren't right on top of themselves, so that means it's a little bit off, but overall pretty good. And finally, let's talk about heart rate accuracy from the built-in optical heart rate sensor on the back of the Polar Pacer Pro and how good it performed. Generally speaking, pretty good. So in my testing, I stacked up the Polar Pacer Pro against a bicep heart rate sensor, which is warm, worn up here, and also a chest base ECG sensor for a baseline of comparison, because these two sensors are super accurate. And all in all, the Pacer Pro held its own pretty accurately, and it looked pretty good and right in line with those other sensors, with a couple of deviations here and there, but nothing major. Generally speaking, pretty solid heart rate performance from the Pacer Pro. So are these worth getting? At the end of the day, should you go out and buy a Pacer or Pacer Pro. Maybe. But if you are an existing Polar customer who's primarily a runner and you're looking to upgrade a device that's two or three years old, I think the Pacer and Pacer Pro represent a pretty solid upgrade path that might be worth looking into if you're kind of stuck in the Polar ecosystem. I think I said that in a bad way, but Polar ecosystem is pretty good. And at the end of the day, it's good to have options and these devices are pretty solid. It just gets a little bit confusing when there's so many options at these price points. But now I wanna hear from you. Are you interested in the Polar Pacer or Pacer Pro? Let me know in the comments down below what features have sold you on these devices. Is it the price? Is it the running power? Or if you're just gonna skip these devices entirely and pick up a Coros Pace 2 or some other Garmin. Let me know in the comments down below. All right, we've hit the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below because that really helps me out and shows me that you actually like this video. Also, if you are interested in picking up a Polar Pacer or Pacer Pro, a Coros Pace 2, a Garmin, any device, I'll have links in the description of this video down below that do help support my channel, but they cost nothing extra to you. So use them. That'd be great. And that's really it. I gotta go now. I've been talking way too long. I'm losing my voice. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.